What's up guys, CP Morty here back with another video and today we're here with another edition of our Tech Myth series. But today we're going to be focusing on more particularly battery myths that do float around the internet. A lot of myths out there involving batteries, so today let's clear some up. Now if you have your own, chuck them down in that comment section as we can build up a cool little list in there and we may even do a follow up touching on your myths about batteries. But let's go ahead and get started. So first off, the one that I hear all the time is you need to calibrate your brand new battery in your new device. So this was a thing definitely quite some time ago you needed to charge it up and then let it drain and then charge it back up and let it drain to a certain amount so that you would get a nice and long life out of these batteries but with a lot of manufacturers already doing this in the factory and also too not to mention they need to do this kind of testing to make sure the batteries don't explode there really isn't that much point. So again, this is one that I do see quite some time all over the place. A lot of people get their new device, they charge them up before they even touch them. That's not exactly necessarily nowadays, as this again has been done by the manufacturer. Now, don't get me wrong, it's always good to charge up your brand new device so that you can use it for longer on battery, but charging it up to let it discharge to a certain amount and then charge it back up, bit of a calibration, isn't really necessary anymore because, well, they're already done at the factory. Coming in number two, this is one that I've heard recently which is absolutely rubbish and that is you need to drain the battery to 0% to get all the old electrons out to get maximum performance. So this myth actually came from one of those stupid top 10 videos that was sent to me by a friend who's not so tech savvy but they did want to check with me whether this was a thing and this is totally not a thing. Now this top 10 channel had like a top 10 ways to like manage your smartphone or some stupid video like that but essentially it was a 5 million plus view video and they in one of the points they actually said that you needed to discharge the entire battery all the way down to 0% every single month to get rid of all the old electrons for maximum battery performance. Simply put, that is going to destroy the actual battery. Dropping below 20 to kind of 15% mark starts to actually cause chances of damaging and going lower than 10% charge on a battery is almost guaranteed to do damage to that battery. Now, when I say damage, I'm not talking about if you open up the phone, oh, the battery is gonna have dints and knocks in it or it's gonna explode. What I'm actually talking about in terms of damage is the damage in capacity. So the next time you charge it back up, it won't be able to hold as much power. For instance, let's say your battery holds 98% of its original charge. You've used it for a couple months and yeah, it's obviously going to lose a little bit of capacity, but 98 is still pretty good. If you were to go ahead and drop it down to 0% charge, charge it back up every single month, you'll actually most likely see 1% of actual life lost each and every time you do it because of the amount of damage you'll be doing to that battery every time you run it to zero. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a guaranteed 1% loss each time, but there's a very high chance you're going to be doing some serious damage to your battery if you really run that thing down to 0%. Now, yes, a lot of modern smartphones, laptops, and all those types of things do have safeguards built in, so you can't get super low on that battery, but all in all, you just don't want to be running it down to 0% on the little counter in the top corner. Even 1% is still very, very bad. So. No, getting rid of old electrons is something that is really not possible and as far as I'm concerned, electricity doesn't go bad like diesel or petrol does over time. It just is electricity, it doesn't go old. So no, that's a really bad myth that really should never be done. Number three, leaving your device plugged in overnight is a quick way to kill the battery. So this definitely comes up a lot of the time. Personally, I charge up all my devices overnight, whack them in at night, get up in the morning, they're fully charged and ready to go. And honestly, it really doesn't make that much of a difference anymore. Sure, in the early days, this definitely had a problem when batteries kind of had like their memory going on where if you left them on the charger, they would obviously go ahead and perform worse. But all in all, modern devices like smartphones, laptops, tablets, really anything with a battery today all have over charge protection and also do have different states of charging. So just because you plug the cable in doesn't mean it's going to be delivering the full charge to the phone. Let's say the phone's at 90% battery, it's not going to be receiving the same amount of power to that battery as if it was say at 10% charge because the phone's going to detect, well, it's at a higher charge and won't throw as much power at it. This is again done to save the power or rather save the battery and not damage it and keep it lasting a long time. So. The idea of not plugging it overnight has kind of gone out the window. Again, sure, if your device is really old, let's say 10, 15 years old, probably not the best thing. Uh, but at the same time, if your device is 10 or 15 years old, 
the battery is probably shot anyway. But things like trickle charging will save the battery and there's really no problems leaving it on charge overnight. Coming in number four, you should completely drain the phone before charging it back up to recalibrate the battery if you're getting bad battery life. So just like our couple questions ago where you have to drain the battery, this is really not true. Um, the whole idea of calibrating batteries, which we'll touch on in another myth in just a moment, isn't necessarily the thing that it once was. The lower you go in the percentage, the more higher chance it is going to damage it. And again, draining your phone isn't really going to be doing yourself any favours. And charging it up from any percentage also too isn't that bad. As we discussed so far, batteries don't really have the same kind of memory that they once was. So if you plugged it in at 50%, you plugged it in at 70%, you plugged it in at 30%, it's going to charge up just fine and run no problems. If you're experiencing some really bad battery problems, chances are there's not that much you can do and just because you ran it down to 0%, charged it back up and then ran it back down and charged it back up, doesn't mean the battery is going to perform any better, you're just going to be doing more damage to these modern batteries. So unfortunately, it's not really a fix that it once was. Coming in number 5 is temperature doesn't really matter, it's a battery, who cares what temperature it is. Now yes, actually temperatures make a huge difference to how a battery performs. Obviously the hotter it gets the higher likelihood of exploding and the colder it gets the higher likelihood of it just not working at all. Now this is a great example that I have not too long ago I was out filming some uh, shots out in the Victorian high country where it was snowing and a sub-zero temperature and I was out using my big V-mount batteries with my camera which are these big massive batteries that run my camera all day really great for filming, however when I was out in the big high country in that really cold temperatures I whacked the battery on the camera and about an hour later I got a message on the camera saying it was out of battery. Now I know for a fact that these batteries can power my particular camera all day, lucky I had spares with me, but essentially the battery got so cold it wasn't able to perform and deliver the charge it needed to the actual camera, meaning the camera couldn't run. All I simply did was take it off, put it in my pocket, even though V-mounts are massive batteries I did have a large jacket on, uh, but I put it in my pocket, it came back up to body temperature and it was perfect for another hour or so before it then got too cold and stopped working. Now this is the same thing with your phone. If you were to take your phone out into the sub-zero temperatures, if you do live in a place that happens to snow a lot, or snows at all, if you were to take your phone outside and use it, you will notice a lot less battery life than if you were inside where it was warm, because well, the batteries do start to lose its performance in the cold. Warm it back up and it's going to be perfectly fine. And this is the exact same scenario if you were to take it into a super hot environment. The hotter the battery gets, again the less performance it has and a lot of phones, tablets and laptops laptops will have an automatic shut off so when that battery gets too hot the device won't work. So yes, temperature actually has a lot to do with how the battery is going to perform and not to mention how the battery lasts over time. If your battery is always freezing cold or always overheating, you're going to be getting a lot shorter life than if you were to keep it in its operating temperature and every battery has a different operating temperature. So just have a look at the spec sheets or the battery itself if you can get access to it to see what range of operating temperatures the battery should be in and you can get a fairly decent life. Batteries have memory so I should always charge them up and discharge them for best performance, right? Well actually no, as I did touch on before, batteries used to have a memory and this would have been true quite a few years ago, but simply put today's modern batteries are well a lot better than what they once were and as I did mention whether you're charging at 10%, 50%, 75%, 80% it really isn't going to make a much of a difference and the whole memory thing isn't actually a problem anymore. Again, whenever you charge it is going to be perfectly fine. In fact. I've owned a number of smartphones where I've been charging them up at about 50% and I've never had a problem with the actual battery. So all in all, no, nah, there's not really too much of a problem with charging it up and you don't need to go ahead and run it to completely flat and then charge it back up for maximum battery life. In fact, as I did mention, you'll damage the battery before you do anything good. And number seven is a bit of a funny one, but charging your phone in the microwave, does it work? Well, no, this was actually a prank that uh, went really kind of bad a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago now, but uh, if you can put two and two together, no, putting a phone or a laptop or a tablet in a microwave isn't going to charge the actual battery. So as I did mention, yes, this was a prank that kind of got spread quite around where a lot of iPhone owners were being told that they could put their iPhones in a microwave and microwave it, and supposedly the little microwaves would charge up the electrons inside the battery. 
that is obviously not the case. Now, yes, it is true that charging up electrons does give the battery charge. Obviously, that's how batteries work, but using a microwave won't do it, and a microwave is designed for cooking things, not necessarily for charging batteries. The only result after microwaving your phone is one, the phone won't work, and two, the microwave won't work or won't be safe to work. So, no, charging up your phone in a microwave does not work. If you want to use wireless charging, sure, there's a lot of options out there from phones that have wireless charging built in. You can just slap it down on a charging pad to getting your little adapters on your case to allow wireless charging on phones that don't have it. There is a lot more ways than just plugging in a cable. So if you're kind of sick of plugging in a cable, uh, have a look around the internet. There's a lot of ways to adding wireless charging, even if your phone doesn't support it. So there we go. These are some myths that I've heard around the internet that can be really crazy and uh, do go around quite a lot. If yours wasn't covered here, let me know down in that comment sections and uh, we can build a nice little list down there. But thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.